entryway to the cable car up to the castle. I'll forego that and walk up the steps, which I'm assuming are straight ahead up that alley. Working my way up the street, some of the clocks that are embedded in the wall to advertise and promote this uh, bar, I believe, and restaurant built into the ramparts. churches, I don't know which is which, and then the cathedral. Working my way up what I believe and hope is the walkway up to the castle. I'm picking up some of the other detail. This shrine, I notice in particular the holes that surround those two arches. What was once in there? some kind of embellishment. And did the area below hold some kind of plaques of explanation? It was the first gate we passed through of many. It's a cable car, so must be doing something right. If there's that question. Around the tight 180 turn. This is just what it looks like, a massive fortress. It makes no pretense at architectural elegance or beauty or drama, like the ones that we sometimes saw in India. Archway in the outer wall to allow the water that sometimes chasms off this castle exit to the ground below. And our next. It has 50 buildings, covers 33,000 square meters. Fortress began its thought in 1077. When was the Battle of Hastings? Fortress, then an archbishop's residence in the Middle Ages, and then in the 19th century as a barracks. In the pettiness of small people, a young woman there with the brilliant bright red dyed hair arrived I think late according to the bells of the church but took her very sweet calm cold time getting herself set up and then as she knows we're sitting there waiting for her to give us a ticket she then finally turns to the window takes out the blocking part where you speak and then looks at me and raises her eyebrows to say well I'm ready and I thought, this is the small little piece of power that you get, the ego trip you get from your job. Good on you. <laughs> Our next uh, entryway looks like it's into the castle proper, quite heavily defended. Notice the stairway that you see up there, the ringed stairway. And also notice that triangular uh, protuberance to give it. I guess a different angle of shooting. That is where the tram goes. Wow, that takes them right inside the castle. That's pretty cool. Here's the cable hoist. Comes right up into the castle. Is that too cool or what? For 15 bucks? Hmm. It looks like we enter into almost a tunnel. Well, not almost, it is. Sure looks defensive. Doubled heavy metal. Iron bars, archways within this tunnel. Interesting, looks like they could perhaps slide timbers down in those two slots and block off at least the lower part of this door. A plaque somehow referring to Paris, 
above that doorway. See that that lower door has the same kind of a, what I think is a defensive blocking mechanism. There's the same mechanism, but with our large doors to back it up. Exit out of that tunnel. We're in the Smith's Tower now. Would have put a smithy here. I don't know, but I'm sure they had a reason. Now that's a pulley, and presumably that's a hole in the floor there. Maybe it went down and gathered water. Maybe that was why it was located here. Building on my right, as I walk up into the castle proper, is apparently the granary. Well, I'll just pan about here. Pretty much, I guess I would call it, for my purpose, the main level. There's a tower, of course, and that may have been an earlier tower, the rounded portion, but it certainly represents another level of the castle, as we can see from the trees and the separate buildings up there. Notice this pile of cannonball that's been assembled, whether they were for cannon, catapult, or both over time, I don't have a clue. Here, of course, still another tower. And I could identify these if I chose to bring out my paperwork in the rain, but I don't. And on that round tower, let's look and see what this is. Perhaps a coat of arms put in this position to make known the obvious to those who came. Those have been typical windows, shutters for those windows. I'm guessing so, probably contributing to the draftiness, but maybe they had fabric over those on the inside. My strategy until something tells me different is to follow those folks, hopefully up to the top. Here to my left, which now houses the cafe, is the workhouse. We'll swing off to the left here and down these stairs into the open part of the castle. That's a weapon. I'm guessing that that's metal wrapped around it, in addition to those metal bands, to keep the thing from completely coming apart. It might be a howitzer. I do recall that they made them from wood, believe it or not. Interesting escape route. What it was for, I don't know. Gets to there, I don't know, other than to walk down those stairs, but I mean, how you come up through there, I don't know. I've walked down those stairs to explore this area and it looks like with this huge massive door it was just another entryway into this part of the fortress. It may not be an entry into the fortress per se from the bottom. That's a big building on our left after we come back from that uh, little trek down the stairs. There's the people are right now. Is where the workhouse is on the right, and this place, uh, building to the right, right near us, is the refectory. And I'm just standing at a juncture and under a little door alcove, so I can picture this next part of our journey up into the fort, which will be up to that doorway there, whatever that is. This is where you would get an audio guide, which I'm going to bypass. I've been in a lot of fortresses. I'm sure there's some interesting detail but I don't want to spend the time doing it. So this must be the, probably where the king would hang out, his personal rooms, and this last holdout, if you will, the keep.